Welcome to the Butterfly Effect Studio. I'm the host, Christian Rebenick. As we know, based on the Kyo theory, small changes can have a big impact. And the goal of this session is to uncover how leaders and change makers develop their purpose, um, their competence and community to have a great positive impact. And yeah, every episode um, is packed full of ideas you can apply directly to your life. In this conversation, I speak to Rolf Schrömkens, a former CEO and founder of Trivago. He recently founded also Leadership Sprouts to support entrepreneurs in building resilient and value-based organizations. Really great to have you here. Um, Rolf, so as a first question, um, maybe to learn that because you founded Trivago, what recently has motivated you actually after this big success um, to found Leadership Sprouts? First of all, uh, super nice to be here. Um, so thank you, thank you for having me. Um, so um, yeah, it's it's a longer story. It's a longer story. Uh, but um, but the core the core of it is um, that over over more than fifteen years, um, I had uh, the freedom um, to develop Trivago um, to a really um, impactful, uh, very sustainable company that. Um, was, um, I think, v valuing uh, the individual a lot, uh, valuing the um, um, valuing the power and the impact that in can in individual individual can have, and we developed our very own idea of leadership in that in that in in these in these times, but over the last uh, three years as well. I was for the first time feeling the impact of capital markets on on our um, our um, enterprise, and um, and I was seeing the downside of how capital can destroy um, how capital can destroy the long term vision um, and um, also the value creators within a company, and um, and that is something that drove me to say like okay how can we how can we um, take some of these experiences and um, how can we take them uh, to other entrepreneurs? How can we exchange? How can we learn from their experiences as well? And how can we aggregate that? And, um, and that is basically dominating what I do right now. Um, that's amazing. And, uh, and I think really relevant um, because there is a conflict and it's, I think, sometimes really natural uh, because of this long-term versus short-term, maybe profits, which um, uh, investors also expect. But why is this relevant? Uh, why do you want to help others actually? Uh, why did you think, okay, it's a problem, um, but why is it worth solving? And what is driving you actually um, to work on this? You know, I, I think I think I, ju I just had I just had the privilege to see both sides of the medal in within myself, and I had the privilege to see, especially the the, the downside of it in a in a later stage of my career. Yeah. So, so I had the freedom in an early stage to develop freely and to develop my own ideas of, of leadership, my own ideas of, of like how organizations can work and how they can create value. And, um, and I was, I was experiencing the other part in a later stage of my, of my, um, um, evolution. And therefore I think I had a bit of a more, uh, cautious, uh, view on it, yeah. So I had the chance to really cautiously see the difference, cautiously see the impact of capital, um, and I think that was a big privilege for myself um, because I think that um, most of founders don't have the differentiation because um, they already don't have the freedom for many years to develop their idea in a way um, that they are in, independent from capital influence, and they don't see what can be created and what can be can be achieved. Uh, without having that direct impact on on and this direct focus on sh short term short term success, and um, and I think that is that's really driving me because I see that we are in an ecosystem that is on one hand um, really uh, limiting our ability to uh, to cope with the complexity of the world to connect. With the world, we can connect with others, and so on. So, con build these connections on a on a maybe on a more foundational level. You can also say more abstract level. I would say more foundational level. Mm -hmm. um, but but at at the same time, I see also how we destroy value. Even 
in terms in 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 very very uh, rigid terms of profitability growth and so on and so on so so i see i see both happening at the same time and that is really driving me crazy and um and and i and i i think for me it's important to um to see to do, uh, to 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 give entrepreneurs the room to take a a more bird's eye perspective on themselves to see these impacts like how what it does it do to them what does it do to their organization and and to to offer ways to get around it so literally based on your personal experience and the value you have gained uh, the insights you have gained you want to help future entrepreneurs be successful um, and not make compromises directly based on capital requirements eventually if i understand this correctly um, be be, su be successful, yes, mm -hmm. and and ideally be successful in a broader, more holistic uh, coordinate system. Yeah, so so be be more successful in general. Yes, I think you can be more successful when it comes to uh, creating a valuable company. Yeah, but uh, but um, success has also very different metrics, and um, I think you can perform on a lot of them way better when you're not having this short-term focus. Um, so just before we move forward, one step back with Trivago, you you did take the step to make an IPO at Nasdaq. Yeah? Um, mm -hmm. Was this the trigger you have been talking about going public or was this independent from going public? So did you already be before with taking on capital, even though it was not that much actually, yeah. because um, Trivago was so actually already making so much earlier revenue. But was this the, the, the issue which caused the conflict? Uh, yeah, for, for for me that was ultimately like the, the the beginning of the change. You know, like mm -hmm. often I think it's an aggregation of several things, and it's probably not always like uh, just just this one one thing. But but I would say this this was probably like the the, the thing that the, the tipping point of it. Yeah. So um, I think I think that for a long time. So so when it, when a corporation gets larger, I think the natural thing that happens to you. Um, I think to most of us as founders of startups is that um like the, the 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 more conservative more established narrative kicks in at one point uh, where people tell you oh you know you have been a startup before you have uh, done things this and this way but now you are a big corporation and now things go differently now you need experience now you need processes now you need this and this and this and this, and this right and now you have to change everything because the way how you did it you know, that is just for small companies, but now you're the big company and now you have to do it differently. And and I think that is something that, that I was feeling way, way before, right? So when, when we, when we were from, went from 20 people to 50 people, people told me, Rolf, the way of how you deal with this, this will not work. You know, you have to do it differently. You don't have to hire, hire experienced people and so on. And, and no, we didn't do that. We, we uh, you know, we, we kept on running it the way that we, 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 we ran it before. We rather, we were rather, of course, we were developing it further, but we were, we were rather developing it further away from the, from the established narrative. Yeah. And, um, and then when it was a hundred people, people, you know, approached me and said, Rolf, this is not working this way. You have to change it. And when it's 200 people and 500 people and thousand people, and always people come to you and tell you, that the way of how you lead this organization and how you create value, that this is very unprofessional, that it's not part of the narrative, how it's done and so on and so on, right? So you constantly have to fight against windmills. And every time, you know, somebody joins your organization from another organization, you know, they come in and they say like, Ralph, this cannot work like this. You know, you know, you, you, this is how you lead the team. So no, I cannot lead a team like this. You know, this is not the way of how, how I, I, am, I am and how I, how I learned it and so on. Mm -hmm. And, and that is very natural in human behavior because basically people had before created their identity of, around an idea of leadership, you know, that they, that, that, that this made their identity, right? They were successful before because otherwise they would probably not have been then one day come to us. So they had been successful in, in, with, with their way of leading and their identity and to, and every time people had to join us, they had to basically go through the stages of unlearning that. Uh -huh. So they first had to unlearn basically the, this, 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 this established narrative and then start to think, think differently about how to lead people. And of course, everything, every time somebody comes in, this creates also um, friction, right? 
friction within teams and so on. So, and, and of course you can be, you get better and better in onboarding and you get better and better in putting expectations out there and so on, all of this, right. But it's still, you, you, you don't have, you don't have, a, you, you, you can't create an island, right? So you're, you're at the end, you're a corporation and you're, in your corporation, you have different, different kind of like connections to the outside, right? And one of these connections is that you have to bring people in. And, and um, of course, like um, the, the majority of people we brought in, we brought always in very early in their career, right? So when they didn't have to unlearn an established narrative, at least not so much, right? So when they went through university and so on, and then it's still easier because they had, didn't have the experience before, so it's st still easier to unlearn whatever idea you have in mind of leadership, right? What 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 kind of if you talk about leadership, what kind of competences? What 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 would you expect from those kind of people? What kind of is it the, the process or is it like the would you expect different competences which they bring in and you would say, hey, this is before you can join us, this is what you need to learn actually. Um. So, so, so I think that that the way of how most of our systems of education, how, how most of them are built, is in a way that you learn horizontal competencies. Mm -hmm. In the best case, yeah. So in the worst case, you you I don't know, you learn knowledge or something, right? So stuff that you can easily, the information, data, whatsoever that you can e easily get from somewhere, right? That's the worst case. Yeah, I think in the in in a, in the best case you learn horizontal applications. Yeah, so so um you know like competencies of you know I don't know how to lead a team or you know in the best case right so so things like this how to uh, communicate how to present a topic uh, how to work together and so on that is already second level horizontal applications basically mm -hmm. yeah um but what I think our uh, systems of education, at least in the vast majority, don't do is they don't upgrade the operating system. So they teach you apps, but they don't upgrade the operating system. And what I mean with that is that, you know, the, these apps run on our operating system. So the, these apps, uh, an app like how to lead a team efficiently runs on my operating sy system on like, what do I believe about myself? What do I believe about the world? what makes sense to me, what doesn't make sense to me, and so on and so on. And 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 we completely neglect that. So we teach everybody a specific <laughs> a specific app, right? And we don't understand that every every operating system at the end defines what you do with that app. So instead of teaching apps, you know, I think I think um it's it's way more important to constantly upgrade the operating system because with that you basically unlock a lot of competencies in any of your apps that you're using. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that is basically my picture, and 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 this is this is rarely done. I've I've, I've not experienced myself doing uh, that. It's it's done. I've not experienced it somewhere else. It's it's rarely done in in our in our um in our um systems of education that we have right now. Yeah, but when you talk about, talk about the operating system, I like that a lot <laughs> coming from a software development background. Yeah. Um, you're talking about this kind of self-reflection process of the self-awareness of Things like, did you, how do you recognize the environment? What do you expect from others? I guess so. This is the the things with, um, like literally your your understanding of society and interaction. With the under, our underlying our underlying assumptions about the world yeah. that we are often not even aware of. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, but underlying it says already it's hard to change if you're not aware of it. Uh, in the first place, yeah. So if you impossible, probably. Yeah. <laughs> so you mentioned then. What, what, so how 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 did you work together with actually leaders, which maybe you want to have a different I, understanding of yeah. fundamentals, for example, about expectation leadership? Yeah. I think awareness is important, right? So as you said, but, um, I mm. hundred percent agree. In the moment where you're not aware, there's in, in like it's impossible to change. If you're aware, it's still the question if you can change it. But with but awareness is there of uh, is, is always first, right? So uh, you it, it's it's really impossible to change things that in our blind spots, right? So things that we don't we don't have an access to, right? right. And there's for anybody of us, how however evolved your operating system is, there's always something in your blind spot that you cannot see. Exactly. You know, and, and ideally other people understand it about you, but maybe they don't even understand it and you don't understand it, right? So there is this, this, this blind spot. And the question, the question is for me is like, how can you 
get more of these underlying assumptions that we are not aware of? How, how, how can we get more and more of this into our awareness, right? So how do we put this into our awareness? And then like, how do we develop competency to work with this in our awareness? Yeah. And, 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 and my, and my, my observation from my own journey or journeys that I've, I've been able to, um, you know, to, to, to mentor is, is that, is that basically in the moment where you get an awareness to it, right. That is already a very, very important step. Yeah. That's the mo most important step. You know, the most important step is because in the moment I, now I understand, I always act like this, if this happens and, and, you know, that's the first step of awareness. And then the step and ste step is to ask yourself, okay, like why does, you know, what, you know, what, what is underlying that? So what, what is underlying my action? So I seem to have this pattern, right? So what is underlying this pattern? Yeah. And is this something that I do intentionally? Is this really something that I own inside myself? Or is this something that happens rather with me? Yeah. yeah. Without me being the, being the, the, the active observer of, or, 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 or driver of it. Yeah, right. it's, 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 these automatisms are also good things because that's how you don't need to think anymore about what you actually do. But then there's the disadvantage yes. of it. The first thing somebody tells me something, I make this face, uh, you know, or I'm smiling, you know, and this is a typical reaction as a first on whatever is presented to me. And I, I keep on repeating that. Or the first thing I go into a meeting, I start looking outside of the window uh, because I feel really bored or something like that. So I think this kind of automatisms is, is, is really what is what defines us literally um, um, implicitly without us knowing it. Yeah? Um, and I think also the self-awareness. So it's very important. Would you say this is one of the most important things for leaders um, in today's world, actually this kind of self-awareness and being aware of what they do and how they react? I, I, I think, I think it's for me, it's, I couldn't imagine why it's worth to work on anything else when, when we have not started there yeah. the, because you know, because the problem is that everything that you, every technique that you apply on top of this, you know, at the end is just a reflection of your inner self and your understanding. So, and 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 you can, and that and that is actually what you see in many trend, transformation processes that you have in in larger corporations or whatsoever, right? So, what they do is basically they take the individuals that they have, right, and then they t they they start to 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 teach them techniques, you know. Agile, you know, that is like, you know, everybody is now like, like in every organization, whatever, however old or whatsoever, everybody gets to, to uh, gets taught agile techniques and it's not bad. Yeah. You know, it, I, I don't say it's bad, you know, it's, it's, it's of course the progress, but what happens is, you know, you, 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 you learn these agile techniques, but you, you don't even value the input of others. You don't even value the feedback. Because you're you're so much in into your ego and your own identity, and you're so unreflected about this, you know that that you just use this as a as a means. And in this moment, it becomes cynical because you you don't even believe in it. Mm -hmm. You know, you just you just use it because you know, okay, this is a new modern thing, and if I want to go up in the career ladder, ladder, I have to do this bullshit, right? But I don't really believe into it because I don't really understand it. I don't get access to it. I, I don't get access to the funda fundamentals, which are which are deeply rooted also in 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 basically the um, in, in 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 a process of like where, where like 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 for example, agile is it's a advanced in the core, it's an advanced um, uh, kind of like organizational development, yeah, yeah. But uh, but it's not used that like that in the, in the majority of cases, you know. So, and, and, and that is because yeah. of the individuals and that at the, at the end, we have to start with the individuals and then we can t teach them techniques on, on, on top of that, you know, like when you, when you like all these kind of ideas of new work, right? So you, you have to imagine, okay, you have, you have people who are not developing themselves further internally, right? And they look with their own mi mind, mindset on ideas of new work and what they hear and what's, what's the information that gets through to them is I have to buy um, like a kicker table and I have to buy, buy beanbags mm -hmm. to be attractive to, to, to new, uh, new employees of uh, generation Y and Z. So that's why I need, I need the beanbags. So that's basically what's, what sticks, right? It's, <laughs> and it's not the idea of, 
shit, you know, I have to, I, I give, I create a room for people in which they can really kind of evolve themselves and, and get into their force and be incredibly value by, valuable by doing that. That is not what the idea. The idea is, I, you know, I have to do this stuff, you know, to at the end be attractive to new employees. So it's not just about copying things which you're told to do, but actually being conscious about why you do the things you do. Um, but how, how did you learn that for yourself? So was it like from the, from the beginning on, like in school already? No. Um, what, but how do you develop that? Uh, no. Nope. Nobody, nobody taught me, you know, like nobody, nobody taught me. Um, uh, and, and that's why I also didn't do it differently. So like when, when, when I started Trivago, I was, I was very overreaching. I was, I was destroying a lot of value by not giving people the room that they deserved and so on. And, and that it didn't fall apart at what one point was just lucky, you know, and, 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 and let's be, let's be also, um, I, you know, I, I, I think, I think, and people will say, yeah, but, but there are so many people who are so, um, I don't know, dominant in the way of how they do things, you know, and I don't know, speak about Oli Zamba whatsoever, right? And and he's also super micromanaging and super overreaching and still works. Yeah. You know, whatever. Have you have you have you seen have you seen like companies that are doing a business right now and 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 like like who are 20, 30, 40, 50 or 100 years old? They are so incredibly unproductive and and of course, with everything that you do, you will disrupt them. Right. This is not hard. You know, it's really not hard because the, the, really the, 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 there's so much value that can be more created. So, of course, even when you create have a back technique, you probably can still create currently a valuable company. Yeah. That's not hard. Right. So. So. But 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 we, we, so you can still do fundamentally things wrong. Yeah. And. um and um, and and I did as well. It's maybe even so the worst thing if you're successful despite being actually eventually not self-reflective. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. It's 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 it and 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 um and and it, it can happen, but but it's, it gets super critical. I tell you when it gets gets critical. It gets super critical when the organ when the complexity goes up, and the organization becomes larger. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so small organizations can be can be ruled by extremely dominant people who, just because of them being extremely smart and ex extremely motivated, like overreaching into systems, right? And then they can create something and it's working. But it is several tendency that goes go against that. And um, one tendency is in the moment where the the organization um, grows, complexity grows exponentially. In the moment where the organization builds connections to the outside world, um, um, uh, complexity grows um, um, exponentially. And in the moment where you cannot hold all this complexity into, in yourself, in one individual, this falls apart. Yeah. Um, so you have to trust, and you have to, you have to, you have to, to build rooms for other people to be to get into into their force. So if, if yeah. you're saying um so let's say for leaders like literally you would hire leaders which are self-reflective they're conscious of what they do um but now building up those leaders actually or hiring them how do you hire them how do you find them how do you know they actually can grow your organization in um as, as mentioned in, in maybe self-sustaining way yeah and uh, with a purpose mm -hmm. way to be to be to be one hundred percent honest, I think it's really really hard to hire. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's it's of course you do that. Yeah? So of course you try to create um, systems in which which you try to find out. Okay, who who really like? How do I find people who ev evolve themselves? Who 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 not like? Mm, who, who who have kind of a multi perspectivity inside themselves? You know, and, 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 and we would we would always look for that, right? So when we would hire people, we would always look for people where we see multi perspectivity and, 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 and may it be due to the fact that they just did several different things that changed their perspective in life a couple of times and you know and so on. So so and and, and when you would ask people, you would always ask like, Okay, you know what you know, what what kind what made you to the person you are today? So through what critical changes did you go through in your life? That made you to the person you are today, for example, right? So this is a very interesting question because it always reflect it goes back to okay, like where do you see inflection points in mm -hmm. yourself, right? And and there's a very different way of how you can answer these questions and very different levels. And um, 
but 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 of course that is what we would look at but i don't say we are we were perfect in doing that so i think that that it's way more Im important than than you know building you know doing the, building the right filter at the beginning yeah. you know is 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 um creating a profiled identity of yourself so that people do not even want to be part of this mm -hmm. who don't want to go through that pain mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know for for example like like um Rolf. I, we, we, like always, always people approach us. Give me, just, let me just give one example. Yeah. So people always approach us and said, "Hey, you know, um, uh, w what is your career path? So, so how do I progress in in Trivago? So, like, you know, and and then we were, we were, and and in the beginning, like people were asking, like, and, and, and then our our uh, our our teams came to towards me and said, Ralph, you know, there's always applicants asking about that. What's a career path? We need a career path. We need a career path, and so on, right?" And 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 then I we, we also thought about okay do we need that, uh, but at the end we turned this around because because we we thought like okay in the moment where people think like this and they already think about their career path and how they can progress and not about what they can learn you know and mm -hmm. and w what kind of project they can do and what they how they evolve themselves within these projects then then it's probably already the wrong thing so we we told people before. That they cannot expect a career yeah. path from us. They cannot expect titles. They cannot expect a career path. That is not something that we will give them. And if you cannot live with that insecurity, you're probably you're not there. So you probably not you cannot be part of this organization right now. Yeah. Yeah. So 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 I I believe way more way stronger. I I I, I believe in a strongly lived identity. Mm -hmm. Then I believe in in very good filters mm -hmm. for access. Mm -hmm. So you're looking yeah. for this curiosity in people. They are open to learn, open to develop. Um, they don't need a fixed outlook and need to know where they will be in I don't know three to five years. But actually, it's a hey, it's a journey, and we are starting here together. Um, and it's going to be amazing because we have a lot of opportunities ahead of us, but we don't know yet how to solve them. So you're looking for this kind of yeah. challenge um, solvers, um, Rolf, but. Now, now let's take one step back. Imagine you, it sounds like you wouldn't hire yourself 20 years ago <laughs> today. No, no. And that's, and, and, and you are, you are perfectly right. And, and that's why I, I started with the least important thing. And the least important thing is the filter. Yeah. The second important thing is identity. But, but the most important thing is, is was for us to build systems within the company, within the organization to help people to evolve themselves. Right. So, so, so that is the most important thing. The, for me, the most important thing is the process. Is is like, do you build within the organization a process that allows people to do that? You know, and I, I think that 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 would be rather for me the most important thing. So I don't. At the end, I really, I don't believe that you can always get the best people and the best hires and the A people and so on. I think that's all bullshit. Um, but but I believe that you you that that that, that at the end. The differences are not that big. They're definitely not as big as we, we 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 tell us they are, you know. Because we always we always like to be part of an elite. You know, I've been in this university HHL where they always tell you when you have been there, then you know you know you'll be you're you're part of the elite, you're part of the best, and so on. That's you know it's not true. Mm -hmm. You know, there's so many more smarter, way more smarter people, and they're just they didn't dare to, or they didn't want to go into business or whatsoever but we are not really we are not the smartest one at all you know definitely not you know i'm i'm definitely not yeah and and um and so so we we we, we just we just i think the differences are not that big the, the op opportunities are very different to evolve you know and 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 but but the differences between people i've i've seen are not so big so i've i've we really monitored a lot like okay like you know how did people develop we we created systems of understanding of like how do, well do they connect to others and so on and and how, how you know how you know how um how are they performing in their role right now and so on and i've seen just people like it's it's very situ situative so it's very depending on the situation that are people in it's, it's often it's not the people it's just where they you know you can find the right position for everyone you know And um, and it's um, yeah, and and it's and you know I I, I remember that because like a, a good very good friend of mine told me uh, this week when we were, we were for dinner, 
and that he's he because there's the saying of it's important who sits on the bus with you or something like that you know and and i and i told him see um you know it's not important who sits on the bus it's important where people sit in the bus mm -hmm. you know and 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 i and and he he came back to me three years later and he said now i really understand what you said you know and 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 I, I think that is that makes all the difference. So it's not it's not really. I think we over constantly overestimate, you know, like how good are we, like how good are we ourselves, and how good are we in selecting the right people, you know? Have you ever met a founder team where people said like, oh yeah, no, I I, I just picked the average people, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> which is actually the truth. <laughs> This is the truth. They are all, they, you know, on average, they are yeah. average. You know, that's the truth. No, they always they have the best, of course. They have the best teams and they feel like they are the best team. And and probably there's also something good about them feeling they are the best. That's yeah. totally fine, yeah. right? But but um but at the end, you know, just um like like a high level of reflection at least reflect that, you know, no, come on, you know, just Yeah. Probably not, you know. <laughs> so, but you say what is important as well is I think the values uh, which bound you together. So the, the way, for example, I, what you mentioned, I think is does hierarchy matter? If you hire somebody from a consulting company, maybe with 10 levels of hierarchy, you would first need to talk about that. Yeah, maybe because they, hey, we don't have a hierarchy here. We don't believe in that fundamentally. And that's the reason which can help eventually the person to make up his mind, is this the right thing? Yeah, And I think this is the, what you're saying is it's very important to have in the bus people with having very similar values eventually, uh, because otherwise people will have a lot of conflicts over time. Yeah, yeah, you need you need to also to manage uh, this mm -hmm. because in in the moment where you're too uh, homogeneous, you know that will also create problems. And so, so yes, I, I agree on the value part, and I agree that there must be like a joint kind of understanding and a joint idea of like, okay, these are our values, and this is what this is how this this organization operates. So I think that's important. On the other side, it's also very important that you stay open for very different histories and different very different character traits that you're not not too much biased towards introverts or towards extroverts that you're you know and and all of this so i think i think it's also that's also important that you that with all like like i i i, I i'm a believer in this idea of like okay you have to have values and, you, and there has to be some homogeneity around the values but as well i'm a strong believer that it has to be a huge heterogeneity in terms of history yeah. of people. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. bringing in together different people eventually with uh, close values, um, which mm -hmm. are, or have a very high level, for example, of self-reflection, have certain competences, modern competences, which they hey, are very important for the day. So, but um, just coming back to this question, um, now maybe you went to traditional school, you went to a consulting company, and maybe that's not the case. So how can you and you hire this person because he's there's there's a seat in the bus and you want to have him for the seat, yeah? So uh, how do you help him to understand eventually, uh, for example, self reflection? Because I mean, there's nothing more annoying than a person which you which you notice uh, that he I don't know he brags about his knowledge, his not deep knowledge, and it doesn't feel like. Uh, what you want, where you want maybe a more humble culture and, uh, you know, so mm -hmm. how do you help them actually eventually see that or gain that? Or would you just say, Hey, then you're not for us for collaborating or being coming part of the community or company. I think different levels. <sighs> mm. I, let, let me say, I think for, first, I think very helpful is, um, is to get a good quality of feedback information. Mm -hmm. I still feel this is a very mm -hmm. important. Um, and a quality of feedback, a good quality of feedback is not being evaluated by one person. Mm -hmm. The idea of being evaluated by just the idea really today, you know, like I also didn't understand that 10 years ago, but just the idea that there is one person that evaluates you as a yeah. person is incredibly yeah. stupid. It's just incredible and, and still 90% or 95% of the system works yeah. like this. And it's incredibly stupid because my own evaluation is just a reflection of myself much more than a reflection of the person that I value. Yeah. And, and it's very easy to find out. So we, we did that and uh, because we, we, we were looking at 
we, we always um, uh, try to build information in a way that um, everybody was always evaluating everybody in, in all kinds of situations. And, um, and you can clearly see that, that there's more information in the, in the evaluation from somebody. is more information about themselves than about the person. Yes, yes. The, yeah. I like so, this a lot. And if I give you feedback, it says often more about myself than about you, actually, because it tells, tells you what is important to me. I value, I don't know, a beautiful haircut and uh, yes. the right color of a T-shirt. And I don't like you. <laughs> Just talking about, you know. I, <laughs> no, no, yeah. yeah. I totally understand. It makes sense, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and 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 that and that is something that we cannot you cannot you have it. If good leaders are objective, <laughs> no, <laughs> of yeah. course not. Yeah, yeah, there might be there might be some like not not good leaders, but and not experienced leaders, but evolved, very evolved persons might have a better grasp on on not giving you wrong feedback. That might be the case, yeah. Which is, a, but it's often not correlated with with the hierarchy, basically, yeah. So that is that that competence is not often not re related with the hierarchy, but um, but um, but in general, no. There is there is you you. I'm I'm absolutely incapable of giving you really good feedback as an individual person. So, but um, but in the moment where it's not one person, but twenty person, then you get at least an idea. Of like how this person it, it's still it's still not verdict about you as a person or your competency right, but it can be at least it can be an idea of like how do you operate or not operate well in this organization, yeah. and what is hindering you from operating better in this organization. So, but you need more than one person reflecting on you. You need a bunch of people reflecting on you, and ideally, you need somebody working together with you. That is not in a power relationship. To mm -hmm. yourself. Yeah, because any power relationship within an organization is always coming with even bigger agendas, right? So even so, not only that I get feedback from one person, but imagine I get feedback from a person who has an extremely high self-interest in putting me into a very specific position or not position, right? So. Um, so, so in the moment where, so, 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 so and, and that's why, you know, coaching relationships and so on, they are always trying to be not in a power relationship with people, right? So that doesn't work. So, so I cannot coach somebody who is working with me on a, on a, on a daily basis. Saying life. that, um, in your now career, in your past, um, who have been the people you surrounded yourself who have helped you eventually to reflect, to understand, to develop? Mm -hmm. What have been the most important people in your life? Um, so I, I had, I had, um, I really was very lucky. Um, I was, I was, um, at one point I, I became a member of EO. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if you, if you heard of EO, um, uh, many years ago, 12, 13 years ago and no, it's more now, 15 years ago. And, um, mm -hmm. and today, you know, I'm not, I'm not super fond of the organization as a whole, you know, but they have, um, a, a very good thing. Um, which is uh, um, um, an exchange format, a forum format, um, and um, and I was lucky that I was in there very early, and I, had, I was in there with with other entrepreneurs. So you just meet; it's basically an anonymous alcoholic for <laughs> entrepreneurs, right? So you you meet with eight other entrepreneurs uh, once a month for a couple of hours, and basically, um, and 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 you share your own challenges. And the good thing is um, through a trick, um, basically. Um, they established um, really a, a true conversation under equal, mm -hmm. yeah, which is not vertical but really horizontal. So meaning that there's no power dynamics between those people, yeah. And um, and and that was, for example, one of the tools that I used that really helped me to overcome the first initial stages like of blockage, you know, because that is what happens you know like people could ask myself yeah but why should i do that maybe i'm more efficient if i don't do it yeah. and so on yeah yeah I, th i think you have a different sense of efficiency and you might tell yourself when you're not doing it you might tell yourself you're more efficient yeah but but what happens actually is you 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 create you you basically open up the possibilities for you to think and to act 
Yeah, because basically, like we, we what what we are blocked by is our instincts, right? It's our it's our ego that is hurt. It's our our um our reptile instincts that we follow, and so on and so on. And and you can say, yeah, that help us. I, I don't know. They at the end they block us. You know, they they just give us a specific road that you that you need to go. You can still decide to go the same road. You can still decide to work as hard. You can still decide to you know w- whatever you want to do. But I think it's always good to have a have a chance to decide, yeah. right? Yeah. I can. I think that can never be yeah. negative to have have a chance to decide to do a thing or yeah. not to do a thing, right? And that is basically what what happened. So so I I had the chance basically by 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 working with other people to open up this first initial blockage and get some kind of multi perspectivity and 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 different views on life. Yeah, and different views on efficiency and so on and so on. And um, and then I supported that with um, with really intensive coaching um, at at a later stage. Um, and um, I supported it with my own inner inner journey um, of self reflection. I, I try I try to get better people to support me to coach me and so on and so on. So, but that happened in a later stage. Yeah, but 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 just getting this first idea of there is a reality that I I think this is how reality looks like, but there is another person having a different idea of reality, and it's as yeah. valuable as mine. I, I think to this this peer cross support group, which EO uh, literally is, uh, <laughs> even though I like the the, the term anonymous <laughs> entrepreneurs, um, I think what it makes it special is that it's about presenting a challenge, but then getting this this shared experience, what others have experienced for the same similar situations, rather than giving a direct, getting a direct recommendation, which makes you more defensive event, eventually, yeah? Uh, because then you would say, oh, but you're, yeah, okay, he thinks he's smart, now he can recommend this. But listening to the story, he inspires me eventually. Maybe there's something in it for me. Yeah. It's so hard, you know, because basically, and that's why I think it's so difficult to give mm. feedback. You know, like we also always easily said, I'm giving you feedback and then, okay, but because feedback, you know, it comes with so many, you know, like I, I would say probably there's a, a, a lot of feedback that is given that is, is, is completely counterproductive in many ways. Yeah? And, 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 the, and, and the problematic thing is that with any feedback, even with feedback, any feedback that I get, you know, somebody says, tells me, I don't know, Rolf, you would need a new haircut, really. You know, you know, in Berlin, you know, you still run around. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, so I, I ultimately always go in defensive mode. So, so, so to like, to not go into defensive mode and to really see the information, you know, that's probably somebody, something for a high, high degree Zen master or whatsoever. I don't know, like probably a stage where I will never get to, but, but my initial reaction is always defensive. Yeah. And even if I'm not, if, even if I'm aware of it, you know, it's, it's, there's still some defense in it. There's still some going back, you know, and that is always happening when, when people say like, you should do, you know, this and this, there's always a defense. And, and maybe also right so, because what the fuck, you know, you live in your, you live in your reality and in your reality, I should, in, in, that has nothing to do with my reality. You know, so, so, so of course, of course, like, like, and, and what I want to say is, of course, it would be good if I could take that information, you know, it would be and just take it as an information, but, but, but I'm, I'm inca- incapable to do that. So, so information has to be presented to us in a different way. So if somebody else shares this experience and says, Hey, you know, um, I went with this and this haircut, I went to Berlin you know, and then I realized, you know, that this and this happened to me and this is how people treated me and so on and so on, you know, and shares their story, then I can basically say like, oh, shit, you know, fuck, you know, they treated me like maybe it's my haircut. And I can take the decision to yes. cut my hair. So, so, so just as a takeaway, I think also for, for the learners here listening, I think um, it's more important to actually share experiences, personal experience, which has ha- actually happened than actually giving any recommendation, which is a result of an of experience. Yeah. And I think this is, 
And any, any, yeah, that, I mean, that's also interesting to understand. Any objectivation mm -hmm. is already kind of like, okay, you know, I start to basically take something from a personal, very individual mm -hmm. experience, you know, like that is how people treated me to objectivation is a, a haircut like this, you know, you cannot, in Berlin, you cannot walk around. So that's it. That's basically the higher degree. So it's it's in even it's not even an advice. You know, it's just just like I'm starting to basically pick an individual experience and try to abstract it and onto a higher level. Yeah, but but that is already like purely individual. That is my interpretation already. Yeah. So and and I and and, and I think that's dangerous. So whenever you go onto this higher level and you start to say somebody, you know, or you try to generally i do it like this or whatsoever right it's always going away from your very individual personal experience and always trying to give it more weight by generalizing mm -hmm. yeah. you know even if you say something like i i made often the experience that i was uh i don't know i was uh treated badly because of my haircut already that because it's 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 a pattern already. We make a pattern out of it. What happened maybe is twice, and maybe it was even not my haircut. Yeah, like go go down to the to the individual situation where you really were doing something, and go down to it, and then and then and then and then understand. Okay, what was what really happening there? You know, and 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 what I'm saying is that if we generalize then too much, we just get a too simplified idea of the world, right? And we we also and that makes makes it harder for us to act. Amazing. Wolf, I, I, we, we need to come to Sorry. the end. Yeah, um, and I, I have many more questions, but it's, it's, a, it's a thank you for sharing this. Um, and um, I think just what you said at the beginning, from a purpose perspective, already, I say, hey, um, you act, you actually care uh, from your experience to give back, yeah, and try from that actually to share with future learners eventually some of the the, the learnings you have done. And I think. A key part which you see is in the, what people helps people is actually this kind of self-reflection, self-awareness, being conscious about their automatic reactions eventually, and what you call it the operating system. I still like this this terminology of the brain. Yeah, um, uh, is and uh, the 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 part which I think is also another great takeaway is literally this kind of having a peer support group. Um, and how long have you been in that peer support group now? Is it still does it still exist? I'm still part of it because uh, it became such a fundamental thing for me that I'm also afraid to to really yeah. move out anymore. Yeah. Right? So so I mean it changed already a lot and 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 so on. I'm in it for 15 years, but but um, but no, I'm, I'm I'm still doing it. Um, and I I I'm also now like you know that I'm also not doing Brave Space and that is a kind of a 3.0 kind of development of of that, you know and. And I, I see also like like how you can bring it on another level, and still I'm in my old group as well. Amazing, amazing. But um, before we finish, maybe you want to say say one or two words about Brave Space because we haven't talked about this yet, and I think it's a very really amazing initiative actually um, to bring diversity actually uh, this kind of what you mentioned different perspectives together without knowing already what is the outcome. But but please um, share share what you're mm -hmm. doing there. Yeah, I mean, Brave Space is building up what I what I also said before. This is the the, the observation that uh, what we try to do in our organization to give people the room to develop multi perspectivity, and by that being able to cope with the complexity of the world better and be more impactful. That this is something that is not happening in our ecosystem, right? Our ecosystem is not developed in a way that we give people the room to develop multi perspectivity when they become an entrepreneur or whatsoever. We do the opposite. We try to we try to streamline them, bring them down on a specific path, tell them um, you know sh short like short term growth and and profits and so on. That's the only thing that is important for you to look at. So. So um, and 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 I think that is a fundamental thing that um, creates a huge impact, you know, because it defines how our system is working. And uh, and what we try to do is we um, uh, we we brought um, a very di diverse group of people to together to think about this problem and think about how can we overcome this. So how can we overcome this kind of situation where 
where basically the investor with capital often takes away the room of entrepreneurs, of, co of course, unintentionally, right? Takes away uh, the room of entrepreneurs to evolve and to create a long-term sustainable organization. So how can we overcome this? And, um, and as I said before, identity is very important, right? So the identity defines for me the future of any organization. So that's why we try to build a, a really broad identity. So when we speak about entrepreneur, we didn't want to only um, have uh, like, you know, this typical, I don't know, uh, uh, I don't know, super successful, uh, wide, uh, 30 plus uh, year old, uh, you know, uh, people in, in, in the group. But we really, we really, we spreading from very young to old. We spreading, uh, spreading so different, different, um, uh, different backgrounds. Uh, we, are, we we try to balance between um, female and male. So we really, we really try to build a really diverse mm -hmm. identity to on top create this movement. Yeah, and um, and the idea is really that okay, when we have a strong, can build a strong identity out of, out of these people, we can also build a strong movement out of this and maybe have an impact. Amazing. Awesome. And you can um, basically, I'm not sure, probably this is uh, reaching you too late, but maybe then for last year, for next year, when it's hopefully happening. So we, so we do, um, uh, this year, um, we, 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 we go from roughly 50 to roughly 100 people with our, with our event. And uh, 10, 10 places this year will be, beser will be reserved for, um, for new entrepreneurs who are able to apply, basically. Mm -hmm. Um, through a process and um, and um, and maybe maybe there's a chance for you to apply this year or next. Amazing! Year. Yeah. We'll share this um, and we'll encourage um, our also our learners who are founders and many of them actually are considering founding eventually to apply uh, because I think it's a great initiative and very inspiring. Um, thank you, Rolf, so much uh, for actually having the opportunity um, to share some of to learn from some of your experiences. Um, really, really great to see and. Uh, I, Will, I think I need to talk again as soon because it's really great to see how you push your own purpose actually forward and help now uh, to have a positive impact. So thank you very much. Thank you.